Mecca. A man fleeing for his life enters the Kaaba for protection, as it is forbidden to do bloodshed there. Behind him enters another person with an open sword. The first man begs for his life and says, pardon me for the sake of God. The other replies, there is no God today. With one hard blow, he takes the life of the first man. Blood has been spilled in the Holy Kaaba. When the Muslims and the Meccans signed the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, they agreed to have no violence for 10 years. The other tribes of Arabia had the option of choosing either side. Should any of these tribes face aggression, the party to which it was allied would have the right to retaliate. In 629, delegates of a tribe named Banu Bakr approached the leaders of Mecca. They were an ally of Meccans. Their wish was to attack another tribe named Banu Khuzrah because of some dispute dating back to pre-Islamic era. Banu Khuzrah was an ally of Muslim, so according to the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, this was not allowed. But the Meccans suggested Banu Bakr to launch attack at night, so nobody would be able to recognize them. The Meccans even gave them arms and men. As planned, one night the attack was launched. The people of Banu Khuzar were taken by surprise and could not defend themselves. The attackers slaughtered them. Many of them fled to Kaaba for shelter. But here as well, they were massacred. It became clear that the Meccan leaders must have had their hands in the bloodshed. The leader of Banu Khuzar immediately sent a delegation to Medina asking for help. The Muslims promised to avenge them. When the Meccan leaders realized that their treachery was revealed, they promptly sent their delegation to Medina urging the continuation of the treaty. But the Prophet ﷺ could not trust their promises and sent them back. In early November of 629, the Muslims started their march towards Mecca. They were 10,000 men strong, the largest Muslim army ever assembled up to that time. After a week of marching, they reached the outskirts of Mecca. The Prophet ordered every man in the army to light a torch so that from far the army would look even bigger. That night, Chief of Mecca Abu Sufyan went to the Muslim camp to plead again for a settlement. But he could not succeed in his mission. Rather, in a sudden twist of events, Abu Sufyan himself accepted Islam. The following day, the conquest of Mecca began. As Mecca sits in the valley, surrounded by mountains, there were only four main approaches to Mecca. The Muslims decided to advance towards the city through all these four ways simultaneously. This would force the Meccans to disperse their forces. Moreover, it would also prevent any escape attempt by the Meccan leaders. The four leaders in charge of these four groups were Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, Zubair ibn al-Awwam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhum. To further deter the Meccan from fighting, it was declared that anyone who would take shelter in the Holy Kaaba or in his own house would be speared. The Prophet ﷺ ordered the Muslim commanders not to engage in any fighting unless they are being attacked first. In general, the advancement of the Muslims inside Mecca was peaceful. Among the four groups, three of them could reach the Kaaba even without any bloodshed. But the fourth group, led by Khalid bin Walid, was attacked by Abu Jahl's son Ikrimah and his companions. They ambushed the Muslims with swords and bows. The Muslims had to fight back for self-protection. After a short skirmish, the Muslims neutralized the attackers. Twelve Meccans lost their lives during the skirmish. The Muslims lost two warriors. Eventually, the control of the whole Mecca came to the Muslim hands. After the conquest was completed, inhabitants of Mecca were asked to gather at Kaaba. The Prophet ﷺ stood before them. Despite the cruelty and torture that the Meccan inflicted upon the Muslims, Prophet ﷺ showed kindness and set them free from any punishment. They only had to take an oath that they would not go against the Muslims. The mercy encouraged many Meccans to accept Islam. With Mecca under control, 
the Muslims became the superpower of Arabia. Many tribes from different parts of Arabia soon flocked under the banner of Islam. This opened the gateway for total domination of Islam on Arabian Peninsula.